seeing as we have a quorum, I'll declare this meeting of the committee um, open. And I'll advise that this committee is uh, being streamed live and recorded for publishing to the internet. Please note that an audio and visual recording is being taken. This means that your presence at and any contribution you make to the meeting may be collected, used, disclosed, or published publicly by the council, including transferring outside of Australia. In addition to our normal live video feed, tonight we are trialling a live video feed of the committee meeting to the City of Adelaide's Facebook page. Now, I'm going to remind councillors that consistent with council's resolution to the new government structure, uh, this meeting of the committee is to review items that will be presented to council for consideration at the next council meeting. We are not recommending to council and there will be no debate on the reports. This meeting provides you with an opportunity to ask questions, to seek clarity, to inform your consideration. And of course, I remind you in doing that, you can ask as many questions um, and uh, request as much information as you see fit to make a decision during the council meeting, not in this meeting of the committee. <clears throat> Item one, council acknowledges that we are meeting on the traditional country of the Ghana people of the Adelaide Plains and we pay respect to elders past and present. We recognise and respect their cultural heritage, beliefs and relationship with the land. We acknowledge they are of continuing importance to the Ghana people living today. And we also extend that respect to other Aboriginal language groups and other First Nations who are present with us. Apologies and leave of absence, I have Neil. Confirmation of the minutes. Can I please have someone move that these minutes be accepted? Moved by Councillor Martin, seconded by Councillor Ho. All those in favour? No, hang on, Chair. I wasn't given an opportunity to speak. I just want to make the point uh, here. Yes. Um, standing orders, as you observed, uh, were amended on December 10th uh, by Team Adelaide. And the team's motion. Sorry, I'll ask you. Clarify no, I'm clarifying. They were ratified by the council. Well, it was a majority of Team Adelaide votes that got it through. A majority of councillors, yes. Continue. Well, well, I'm glad you made that point, Chair. And uh, that motion on December 10th adopted the following meeting structure for uh, Feb, uh, 1st of February 2020 onwards. And uh, it was proposed that ordinary meetings will be held at council on Tuesday once a month, commencing at 5.30 at the town hall. Ordinary meetings of the committee will be held on Tuesday twice a month, except for December and January, commencing at 5.30. The special meeting of council or the committee may be convened on a Tuesday each month and held in the Colonel Light Room as required, subject to the Chief Executive Officer's determination in consultation with the presiding member. With Sorry, for business. clarity, Councillor Martin, are you asking a question or is this a preamble? No, or are you I, speaking? it's a preamble to the minutes, uh, which you but are you're speaking to, to the motion. I am saying to you that I'm very worried. 1.4 says and you are reading from committee not council minutes i'm reading from uh, uh council this oh, is council because these are where uh, we're talking no, about no. committee look we're talking chair about if you would just stop interrupting and allow me to speak i can only so allow you to refer to the council minutes How sorry the committee meeting the minutes. and i am i am referring to the committee minutes if you will just let me finish 1.4 says that voting on or recommending any item will be exclusive only to council and special council meetings. Item number three, confirmation of minutes. You have to put a matter to a vote. You asked me to approve it uh, or endorse the recommendation. You asked for a second. It's a procedural matter. No, it, it, it does matter. This, this committee meeting, allow me to enlighten you, this committee meeting is technically still a decision making meeting. What? So a motion can be moved but from we will the floor? Not be, we will, no, it cannot. We cannot depart from the agenda that is set in the terms of reference and the standing orders. The only things we will be actually making decisions on and voting on are the confirmation of the minutes and decisions to exclude the public and hold items in confidence when they need to be done so. Well, well Chair, may I have the advice of the administration because the resolution of the council, uh, the majority team Adelaide Council, was that voting on or recommending any item will be exclusive to council and special council meetings only. Now, that's what it says. Can I have the advice of administration? I'll give you the advice of the administration. It's in line with Councillor Moran. Councillor Martin is talking. No, you're talking. You're, talking, you're, you're, interrupting. you're interrupting his time. We'll have one speaker at a time. I'm responding to you, Councillor Martin. Well, that makes a sense to interrupting, in, Chair. In response, in response to that, I'm going to ask the CEO Thank to you. clarify the motion that was passed. I'm sure the CEO will back up whatever you say. <laughs> 
If you could please. Three, um, Chair, the, the, the matters that were being discussed and debated tonight and resolved upon by the committee would be procedural matters uh, that are necessary for the flow of the meeting. The intent of council was that matters would not be debated and resolved upon outside of those procedural matters. Briefly. It doesn't say that in the look, motion to you. Look, uh, Chair, I would like to make the point that we are being invited to make a decision, not on a procedural matter, but uh, later in the agenda at item five, we're being invited to vote as to whether or not we will consider something to be so important as to exclude members of the gallery, the public. That is not a procedural matter. It is an it importance. Is, it is a procedural matter. I, look, I, I beg to differ because we can vote against that. We can vote against that. So therefore, we are voting. You vote on procedural matters. Well, I beg to differ. That's, that's how that's how the meetings. Work. I beg to differ. The minutes record clearly that we will not be voting or recommending any item. It didn't say accept procedural motions. Any item. Well, the interpretation of the minutes is in line with my with my intention of voting for them as a council member. Um, the CEO has taken that interpretation and, uh, uh, and and given us the structure that we have. So, and that is the structure. What that you're we're saying going is that we mind. can, for any procedural matter, uh, exact a vote, and a procedural matter might include Game. what range of issues? Anything that relates to regulatory matters for the conduct of a, of a competent and official <coughs> meeting. Well, does that mean, uh, for example, a, a vote of confidence or a, a vote against a, a member? We don't do any matters? matters like that at committee. We haven't traditionally. Those are for the council chamber. Well, that's a pity because I, I would otherwise put forward a vote of confidence. No confidence. No confidence. <laughs> Councillor Sims. Thanks, Chair. I think um, Councillor Martin's raised a very important point here um, around the way in which this new structural change i'm going to draw councillor yeah. sims to the relevance right. are you speaking well it is relevant the... to part two the minutes actually um, the issue which section of the minutes is it relevant well it's to... relevant to the question of whether or not we can actually vote on accepting the minutes as an accurate record and the point i was going to make is that i think councillor martin has made a very fair point that the implications of this radical change to our structure have not been thought through and it's not a criticism of um, our administration, it's a criticism of the architects of this change. Um, and it's been led by the elected members, and I don't think there has been consideration given to the implications. We're about to sit here in virtual silence for the next hour as we just have a Q&A where we can't even debate or discuss any of the issues before us. I'm not sure that that's been properly thought through. And I think the basic of this debate about the minutes um, has highlighted that. Any other councillors wish to speak? Yes, I do. Please, Councillor Brown. Yes, the motion should have said excluding procedural matters. Now, that does not say that. It says the word any. And that prohibits us voting to put things in confidence, to vote on the minutes, and for you to say that that's our practice, uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, is surprising, seeing you barely know what our practice is. But we have had meetings like this in the past that had no voting, and it didn't include the minutes, and it shouldn't. And if you knew what you were talking about, you would know that. If you want to go back and exclude procedural, and, I, and I, I'm aghast that the, um, that the team Adelaide did not get this motion when they changed the meeting structure, checked by the administration, so it would be actually correct. I had no idea that we weren't able to discuss anything in these meetings. We just sit here like dummies and, and listen to what we've been fed. I'm not even sure I'll be attending too many of them by that sound. And also, when you announce that the meeting can sit because it has a quorum, you misunderstand the nature of this too. These meetings don't have to have a quorum as your team. That is incorrect, Councillor Moran. That is incorrect, and you know it. Um, Rudy, could you please provide the councillors who are unclear on the intent of the motion um, what your reasoning was behind how you interpreted that motion and how it's eventuated with the structure that we have now. Point of order, can I be, can I be fair to the staff? Perhaps we should ask those who proposed this yeah. to articulate. That is not a valid point of order, well, Councillor Sims. Councillor Sims, I am the chair. I am the chair. 
And for the benefit of yourself, Councillor Moran and Councillor Martin, I have asked for our staff who put this all together based on our motion to give clarity as to how they've come to this structure. For your benefit and those other councillors who have seen fit to use a mere item like confirmation of the minutes to disrupt the good practice of this committee meeting. No, point Councillor point Martin, order. I'm passing. Withdraw I'm passing to. I am withdraw it. I am passing to Rudy to give further advice. Through to presiding member um, to clarify the questions raised, the meeting regulations prevail um, and dictate in section eight of the meeting regulations that the minutes of the proceedings at a meeting must be submitted for confirmation at the next meeting, or if that is omitted at a subsequent meeting of that committee. So this is uh, purely executing what's in the meeting regulations, setting aside the wording and the interpretation of the council resolution on its governance structure. Um, I need to clarify that interpreting otherwise would be ultra virus because that's not within the scope of the meeting regulations which are binding. Same applies to the moving into confidence which is a uh, provision provided for under section 90 of the Local Government Act. That's a procedural motion which council uh, members need to consider. They may vote in favour, they may vote against, but the vote is presented if it's moved. Thank you, Rudy. And with that, I'll ask if there are any other speakers to this motion. Do you have a question? No, I will let you sum up. Before you sum up, I'd just like to highlight um, that the council was very clear in its intent, to my mind. Um, uh, looking at this from the chair, I'm incredibly disappointed um, that a mere item like confirmation of the minutes has been used to score political points and to attempt to disrupt the good functioning of this meeting. The law is very clear. The Local Government Act is very clear. If we were not to confirm this minutes, we would be acting ultra vires. And that holds sway over everything we do. And that is what has informed the administration's interpretation and the way that we're conducting this meeting today. Councillor Martin. Thank you, Chair. I was merely pointing out the incompetence of the motion that led us to this position. Um, before moving to summing up, can I say that I withdraw my motion. I do not wish to be associated with this shutting down of democracy. We need to vote for summing up. It's too late to withdraw. And with that, I put that to the vote. All those in favour? All those against? That item is carried. Congratulations. <laughs> Now moving on to <coughs> item 4, 4.1, communication in other languages, Mandarin translation service trial outcomes. Now, as is the normal situation with these, I'll take these reports as read and ask if there are any questions. Any questions from councillors? Councillor, I do have some commentary, that's okay. Uh, no, you're not allowed to. So any questions? Only questions, Councillor. No, no questions at this stage. There being none, Lord Mayor. Um, thank you, Chair. Can I ask, in terms of the um, the other methods that we may use uh, for communications, uh, particularly with our Chinese community. Um, given the last few weeks, and particularly with the coronavirus, I know Councillor Ho was uh, was incredibly active um, in terms of dissemination of information to that community. Um, I know this trial stopped in December, so I'd be curious to know what would have been uh, the contact over that period, because there's a lot of people asking for information. So can I just ask in terms of how we're going to uh, talk to the uh, Chinese community in particular and get information out, particularly around crisis moments like this, around bushfires, around um, health crisis, etc. Share. Uh, thank you for the question. Um, so, I mean, it would be a, a range of matters, and I know we're reviewing now 
uh, marketing uh, colleagues uh, through you know, reviewing the way we're using WeChat in particular for um, the Chinese community or the Chinese speaking community. Um, we would use a range of emergency response mechanisms, usually of social media and marketing to get the message out. Um, but and I know there was a bit of a conversation in regards to um, some of the recent things we do with community, community engagement. We usually look at the instance or the um, circumstances themselves and assess it on merit. We don't have um, a way of translating and getting information translated in all languages for all services um, that we provide. We usually look at the situation, look at what impacts uh, what members of the community or parts of the community are going to be impacted in base of that, using whether it is translating documents or using different um, media mechanisms to get the message out. Um, but it would be on yeah, that case basis rather than not um, having anything fairly documented as far as I'm aware in the current situation. Yes, please. Um, and, and to that end, because um, there are so many languages, I think we're up to 116 or something different languages in um, in Adelaide itself. Um, do we sort of do we put an emphasis in terms of our customer service teams that they they dual lingo linguists and things like that, so they can speak more than one language? We we don't recruit. On that basis, at the moment, um, we do keep a register not only for the customer service team but across council of those that have speak multiple languages so that can help on an informal basis um, when needs be. And we are certainly keeping um, updated on the the technology in this space is changing quite rapidly. Those who have used digital translation devices a year ago compared to yesterday, it's a much better experience, and we're using those things much more commonly now in the customer service centre as well as um, yeah, throughout the organisation. Um, but it's not, you're not, not formally part of the recruitment process. For Thanks. Instance. Councillor Brent. Just a quick question. Um, in point 15, uh, there's a mention of the Google Home Mini. Just wanted to ask, how many languages that, that, does that device <laughs> translate? Other than other than lots, um, I, I can come back to you on a on a number. Um, I don't actually know the number. Um, no, I was thinking. Yeah. Can I switch to Google? Sorry. Any other questions? There being none, thank you. We'll move to item four point two: neglected and/or derelict properties. Did we ever re receive a response back from the Minister? Um, through the Chair, yes we did. So through the, um, the, the Minister referred it to the relevant um, department and we heard back from them. And so that was what um, helped us clarify some of the powers we had yeah. in the Local Nuisance and Litter Control Act, which was really helpful. Okay. Any supplementary questions, Councillor? No? We'll move to the Lord Mayor. Um, I may be confusing this motion, but were we not also going to investigate um, whether there was the possibility for differential rates around neglected or derelict properties? Other than uh, to compelling state rights. So I was just trying to find the actual motion. Um, yeah. um, through the Chair, I'm, I'm not aware of that being um, part of this particular motion and if it was it probably isn't something that our team could have um, assisted with so I might need to follow up if that was part of the original motion <coughs> and that part still outstanding. Thank you. I mean I, I, okay. in reading that it was you know a, about cleaning up neglected and derelict but I know that we've, we've had great conversations around what our how we can leverage uh, through the chair, um, the motion that this is responding to is precisely as, as written um, on the front page of the report. Um, we can certainly track down there have been various discussions and motions in the last couple of years in relation to carrot and stick approach around um, different ways to address this issue. So we can certainly um, find that information and share that back with members. Deputy CEO, whose motion was that? Uh, it was uh, Councillor Moran's um, motion on neglected and derelict properties that this report is responding to. Councillor Sims. Thanks, Chair. Uh, does administration uh, have a view on how we may deal with 
um, the issues faced by people who are on low incomes. Um, so just to uh, not comment on the issue, but to uh, explain what I'm referring to, uh, I guess I'm keen to understand how this might impact on somebody who doesn't have the means to make the necessary changes to their home because they may be on a low income. Um, does the administration have any views on how an exemption might be provided to them? Um, sorry, through the chair. Um, so I guess when we're dealing with um, neglected and derelict properties, we'd always deal with those on a case-by-case -case basis and we would try to work on um, achieving outcomes if that was what was required that were within the means of um, the people whose properties they are or who are residing in those properties. And we do um, work with our colleagues in the sort of community team um, and get and act, make sure people have the appropriate access to the right community services if that's required. So we would we would take um, sort of enforcement action or expiation an expiation approach very rarely and I think the report sort of talks to um, how rarely we've had to do that so we're generally able to work through um, and achieve outcomes that are sort of mindful of people's circumstances and achieve the right outcome for the amenity of the street as well. Yes. So just to clarify, it's not a punitive approach in terms of what you're envisaging, it's more around connecting people with support and trying to understand if there's a reason why their home hasn't been brought up to. Absolutely. So we would always, you know, our first first port of call would always be to sort of try to determine why the issue might be there and how we can work with someone to fix it. Thank you. Any other questions from councillors? Councillor Moran, this was in response to your motion. Do you have any questions? I do not. You do not? Okay, very good. Thank you. We'll move to item 4.3, Planning and Design Code, Heritage. Thank you, Shanti. Do we have any questions? I'd like to talk about it, but I haven't got any questions. I'd like to talk about it too. And we can quite save that for the council chamber, Lord Mayor. Um, we are allowed to talk about it. So we are allowed to debate, we are allowed to discuss, we are just not making decisions. And there's a big distance. No, Lord Mayor, sorry, sorry, I'll correct you. We're not, we're not allowed to debate, otherwise, that's making a decision outside of an official council uh, meeting. Don't you understand? Don't you understand? It's what understand it is. Sam? Would you agree with it? We're not allowed to discuss, only ask questions. You are really allowed to discuss, however, you fly very close um, to the sun if you're going to do so. Sorry. Discuss without making a decision. Which is, uh, but you're not allowed to express a, uh, a firm view either way on a motion, otherwise you're being taken by the law to have made a decision on it, and you're not allowed to be doing that outside of the council meeting. Sorry, point of order, um, Chair, you, you did advise a moment ago that we're not allowed to discuss, yes. and now you're advising that was on, that was on the debate can we discuss. Discuss. So Can we discuss or we can't no, you discuss? Told us you couldn't discuss. The advice I'm getting is that we cannot discuss. Well, I think we that's all. Well, no, no, I'm just actually asking whether we can actually um, dis like a discussion on this in terms of the PMD. You can ask questions, you can discuss what's in the report as opposed to okay. saying what you're going to vote on and what you're not and how you present it. No, you can't. I'm told you can't. You can interrogate the items and uh, put your questions to them, your questions may have a prayer. The whole thing, I agree See, with you. Uh, through the Chair, Rudy, could you clarify? Through the presiding member, um, indeed aligned with the uh, council resolution on the new governance stru structure, and also aligned with section 90, subsection eight of the Local Government Act, you really can't seek to obtain or effectively obtain a decision outside a meeting of the council. So you can discuss in, in that you can ask questions on the topic, seek clarity, make sure you form an informed view on it. What you can't do is say, for example, oh, I strongly oppose that or I totally agree with that, it's a great idea or a bad idea, uh, I'll be voting against, I'll be voting in favour or, or whatever you may do, that basically 
is obtaining or seeking to obtain a decision on the matter. So uh, I'm not going to debate the definition of what a discussion is or what it is not, but I'm hopeful that um, the examples I'm giving right now enable you to understand the boundaries of these, which have been set by Council by its own resolution on the 10th of December. Chair, look, may I ask you as Chair to suspend this meeting for the time necessary to work out whether we can discuss, to what extent we can discuss. The answer is no, Councillor Martin. We're, we're about to. Thanks. Councillor Kira. Thank, thanks, Chair. Uh, re, re, question for Rudy. Um, I, I think more germane to what how this will play out will be the question of whether we can raise, uh, say, concerns about a particular proposal or policy. So are we allowed to express something along the lines of, uh, look, I am concerned about X or Y, or my general uh, inclination is at X or Y, without uh, suggesting that a person is firmly or not firmly in favour. It's really, I think that's, that's what if I all down to. If I could, Councillor Kira, certainly your questions um, can interrogate the thing that you have a concern with, but yes. Uh, and can your your you can you express you can you express your concern no. with any policy? In a general nature, you can express that concern, but you should not be indicating whether you're going to vote for it or not. So, Chair, are you saying it is okay for me to say, look, I have grave concerns about this uh, resolution that's going to council? That's okay. Which means you're not going to vote for it. It might be. Rudy, Rudy's, Rudy's saying, Rudy, please offer clarity on this. Uh, so the intent of the council when it said this particular governance structure was for uh, this forum to be to enable informed uh, decision making. Informed decision making means you receive the report and you're able to ask questions on that report and, and, and improve your view on that particular topic or uh, get, get some clarity on it. The actual debate is to form part of the council meeting as in for example, I've got great concerns. I think it's a bad idea because of implications you may not be aware of being blah, 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 whatever it may be. That is basically um, leaning towards the decision making or positioning on it. So the positioning on it, that's for the, for the council meeting here. You may say, I don't quite understand. Could you please help me understand A, B, C, D? Can you clarify this? Uh, the way it reads is this, is this how I should interpret it, da 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 da, your opposition or support to that and the associated debate, raising concerns, support, whatever it may be, is intended to be part of the forum which is there to make the decision, which is the council. Yes. Um, so, so uh, Chair, may, may I just ask a clarification? One more question, Councillor Martin. So, is subjective questioning permitted? So is it permissible for me to say uh, in a question, this appears to be a crock. Can you tell me if this is correct? Rudy? Yeah, can you tell me if this is correct? If you're seeking clarification on a matter that's in the report or your interpretation of that statement in the report, that is a question and perfectly within the intent of this forum. This forum is there to help you inform your decision making which will take place at the council. <coughs> council Moran. So if, if you've read the report, which are fairly um, e easy, and you've understood everything, seriously, you're just sitting here listening to the questions of the people that didn't understand the reports over and over again. So it's a complete waste of anybody's time who hasn't got any questions to come to this meeting. Isn't it? Isn't it? Well, that's a matter of opinion, Councillor Moran. I think it was a uh, just for just for just for context, just for context, the reason, uh, as I understand it, that this was brought into the council chamber was because we were debating and voting on the recommendations twice. So, in answer to your point, Councillor Moran, I think it could be easily said that that activity is pointless and a waste of time. Councillor Sims. Can I just suggest, rather than us continuing to quiz um, staff about their interpretation of this, because they're not the architects of this change. Well, actually, Councillor Sims, they are the architects. Well, they're the no, ones who are no, responsible no, for no, implementing. They're not, they're not actually. They're in responsible fairness, for implementing the motions no, passed no, by council. In, in fairness, it was put forward by council. Please come to your point. Oh, We're not going to debate who the architects are. I'm not trying to debate it. I'm just responding to your comments 
Um, what I was going to suggest is that rather than us having a to and fro with uh, staff where we ask them to um, respond to what the intention was, perhaps those who proposed this uh, reform could explain clearly what their rationale was. I know uh, Councillor Adams. Councillor Sims, I think uh, I'll, I'll cut you off there. Councillor Sims, maybe others would like Sims. to articulate what it's we're, we're deviating heavily from the agenda here. I'm going to suggest that any further questions for those who do not understand how this process is going to work be taken offline into the governance team individually. It seems that there are some councillors who do understand how this is going to work. It seems that there are some who don't. And uh, in order to move on with the agenda and to make sure we're remaining relevant to the items on the agenda, I would encourage those councillors who have been asking questions today to take those questions to Rudy offline. Now, do we have any questions on the planning and design code, item 4.3? Very important matter. Lord Mayor. Thank you. Um, Sorry, I, I think it comes to interpretation of a few words like discussion. I can discuss with the experts here about what is in the report and what actually may need some clarification or not. Um, yesterday, uh, I attended the Garrick presentation and uh, workshop, which was a great discussion uh, paper on heritage and character. Um, and I was, uh, there was a presentation by uh, Norman Waterhouse um, which talked through the overlays, um, in particular, and also the direction statements. Um, I, uh, I actually was just saying to Maddie um, that I thought that was really valuable. Is there an opportunity for us to actually be able to either have the same presentation or uh, invite them to present around the overlays, um, particularly the difference between uh, what is currently in the PND code around state heritage, local heritage, um, and character. Uh, through the chair, we would have to take that on notice and see if that would be possible. Further questions, Lord um, Mayor? I'll just hold about this. Um, in terms of, oh, sorry, I just lost my paper. Um, in terms of what is uh, proposed, particularly in terms of the statements, um, so the, they were giving some clear examples of um, the statements that had been um, put forward and how they were being restricted or um, reduced to very short statements, which particularly for us, uh, given the amount of heritage that we have in the city, um, I, I note that our statements are obviously are fairly well fleshed out, but do you know, what, what is the process in us finding out how those statements are actually going to end up in the code? Will we get another look before, or it's just the submission? Uh, through, <clears throat> through the chair, we um, uh, as staff have worked really hard to build a relationship with deputy staff. Um, council will be aware that um, um, the strike error statements were considered and signed off by council and, we, and presented uh, back to the State Planning Commission back in December uh, and they were um, reviewed um, to the best of my knowledge. Um, by consultants on behalf of DICTI uh, and those consultants undertook uh, amendments to what we had presented as council's position um, uh, and material that was considered uh, important to the city uh, had been stripped out uh, and presented back to us uh, as, uh, recently. We are recommending that Council represent the original stand that it took um, simply because um, the bit that is perhaps not included in this report is the fact that Council's um, 
uh, character statements have been character statements that have been drafted over many, 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 many years. Uh, they have stood the test of time. Um, and in fact, the, the historic areas that we have today in the city of Adelaide are very much a reflection of uh, the content uh, of that of those uh, historic or character statements that we have right now, which we recommend be converted into the historic area statements as per what, what's been drafted. Okay. Further questions, Lord Mayor? No. 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 Do you have a question related to this item, Councillor Martin? I can only speak about that. Isn't that correct? We're on this item. Yes, you have to have a okay. question. To the can, can, I, can I observe that this code is a crime? No, you can't. Okay. No, you can't, Councillor Martin. That's okay. indicating well, how you will vote the change. Okay, I won't do that then. Uh, if I can just go to uh, item 29.3 and ask. Um, it seems that the panel is recommending a review of local heritage listed places if an owner requests it, if I'm reading it correctly. The panel supports this. How would that work? It, it doesn't seem to be any detail. Um, through the presiding member, that um, I don't think we have the details of how that how that would work. Um, that item was a recommendation of the expert panel back when they released their original report on the basis that the owner of a local heritage place should be able to request a review of their listing at any time on which that happens. That, that could in effect happen now through the owner of a local heritage place requesting a development plan amendment and at the moment council would have the opportunity to consider that, that request. Given the absence of information around this, is it suggesting that, that is the expert panel that it will allow all owners to submit their properties for review in a wholesale fashion that is a review uh, or is it saying that it accepts the principle of owners being able to come forward and say i want my place re-listed or delisted um through the, the chair I, I don't think there's probably enough information to understand what, what and how that would look like other than intent is to allow owners of places to, to be able to have request their listing to be reviewed so whether that is an individual or a group i don't, I don't think it contains to either but our position is we accept that or we don't accept that that is the right for people wholesale to come forward and say i want my place reconsidered with potentially it being delisted. So if I can draw paragraph 30.3 is yep. where we have suggested that if, if there is to be such um, a circumstance and there needs to be some clearer triggers or circumstances or tests if you like as to when um, a review will be accepted. But you're talking about single reviews, not wholesale reviews? Um, or both? I think both circumstances, yes. Okay, and can you explain to me what it is, and, and it is clear that the administration's uncomfortable about these local area statements, as opposed to the current um, overlay that we have. But what is it that is precisely the issue in terms of the omissions from the new documents? Based on the draft. Uh, through the chair, I'll, I'll pick up that question. So, if I were to use the example uh, of the South East um, Heritage Area uh, as an example, that um, the, the character statement in there talks about things such as roof pictures. So, that, that's a really simple example. Um, the Heritage Area statements don't necessarily pick up detail such as that. Um, I'm just picking that example up as an example. Um, so um, as you would appreciate being the earliest settlement in the state of South Australia, there are some um, nuances around the heritage that is in, in our council area that may not exist elsewhere. And so therefore, um, things such as roof pictures or setbacks or uh, frontages or things like that, fences, fence types, are important elements that have actually um, um, been cared for uh, through a policy setting um, that have ensured that those things have remained intact. 
and so stripping out of inflammation such as that um, through the, the drug heritage area statements has the potential to erode the good work of, of the past. Done with that questioning, Council? Is that a question or a statement? Uh, that's a question. Are you done with your questions? Um, at the risk of offending, uh, yes, I have. That was a statement. I hope that was very informative. Any other questions? There being none, thank you for joining us. We'll move on to the next item, which you actually continue to join us for. Um, encroachment policy balconies, it's 4.4. Any questions relating to this item of business or a policy on encroachments? Councillor, representative. Um, just a quick question. The red text uh, in the report, so is that the amended bit? Through the chair, that's correct. Yes, thank you. Members, any other questions? very well read today. Thank you. Item 4.5, North Terrace Public Realm. Do we have any questions for Matthew on this matter? Councillor Donovan. Thank you. Um, is there an opportunity uh, given, assuming uh, if this were to be approved within council and it didn't get delayed, is there an opportunity to revisit the design? Uh, through the chair, yes. Um, there's a particular requirement due to the services constraints that we would have to look at the trees again. So there'd be consideration made towards doing planter boxes in the wall, trees in ground to accommodate that greening component of the uh, design. And given this is a key uh, thoroughfare for people on bikes as well as of course pedestrians, um, is there an opportunity to reconsider the current complete lack of any facility for people on bikes along North Terrace to look at other options such as a separated bikeway, accepting that it would only be on one side given that the upgrade has already occurred on the other side? Uh, through the chair, just to clarify, are you talking on road or? Well, um, so the current suggestion that a shared space on the footpath obviously doesn't work on the other side. So it could be on road or off road, but separated, not a shared space as is currently provided on the other side. So in, in whatever format that, that took, but something that was dedicated for cyclists, not a shared space. Uh, through the chair, uh, it's my understanding that the design uh, in its current state has considered all the options required. That said, there is the city access plan that is currently underway, which will um, potentially influence the design outcomes of the future. Considering that this project is going to be pushed two years ahead, we would need to consider the, the requirements at that point in time. Is there a design that has been considered in the past that accepting that this is the current format that incorporates a separate bike line along the southern side of North Terrace? Uh, I would have to take that on notice given my time in council. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Donovan. Any further questions in this public realm? Councillor Martin. Um, by way of explanation and context, um, I understand uh, the pipeline people's uh, schedule the work and it would be a, um, uh, a risky exercise to lay all of that slate and uh, to risk having it damaged. But normally, by way of background, when councils... This is a preamble to a question, Councillor. Yeah, oh, it's really important to have the context of the question as the Lord Mayor observed earlier. I'll allow a short preamble. Now, normally when... That's very generous, Chair. He's such a generous. Can we have a vote? A generous chair. Councillor Martin. Um, normally, uh, when a council um, uh, like this postpones work, 
say in Jeffcott Street, where because of the undergrounding of power lines, the whole project has been laid. In, in those circumstances, and this is not dissimilar, the money is carried forward. It is held in advance. Let's ready, come to your question, Councillor. Ready for the work in, say, 2021. In this instance, it's proposed that $3.5 million allocated to the project um, is, I'm asking a question, Chair, the $3.5 million is returned to the budget as savings, and any resumption of that will require a separate motion of council. That's what it says in the papers. And so the question is? And so my question is, can someone in the administration hand on heart tell me this is not about transferring money to the bottom line of a struggling budget, which is almost certainly going to mean we will have to revisit our borrowing levels because of our commitments? And I'll ask the Deputy CEO to take that question. Um, through the Chair, um, as um, it, was, it was deemed a couple of years away, it was felt that that money could be used for existing priorities. So there's no change at all to the long-term financial plan. Uh, the money just gets reallocated to projects that are ready to go. Um, and when you know the planning and it's ready to go as a fully um, designed project, then um, as part of either a QF or as part of your budget deliberations, um, obviously this will come back in and be prioritised accordingly. Um, I understand that uh, and I do get that $3.5 million is going back to the bottom line of the budget, which then would allow it to be spent on other things, including servicing debt, I would guess. But my question, my supplementary question uh, to that is, why are we cancelling the project for reconsideration in the 21-22 financial year when that reconsideration is one year away? That is, one year from today we will be sitting here debating whether or not it's a good idea when the council's already agreed it's a good idea. Mm -hmm. uh, if, Deputy CEO, would you offer clarity to Councillor Martin? Right? Um, I didn't draft that recommendation um, and Clinton um, had um, shared that he felt at the time that there was projects already ready to go and the money could be spent now. So my, that was my understanding of the rationale. There's certainly no change in terms of how we're uh, prioritising or bringing through um, project budgets. Well, can, can I ask a supplementary, Sorry, does, a supplementary sorry, question? Anything to, anything to add to that answer? No, no, if that, if that was the full answer. Councillor Martin, supplemental. Yeah, a, a supplementary uh, question to that. Has there been any direction to council administration to make savings wherever possible on infrastructure, maintenance and other works, such as uh, projects which have been delayed in order to improve the bottom line of council's budget? CEO or deputy? Sorry, what do you mean by direction, please, Councillor? Can you just clarify? I'm asking if a direction has been issued either by the Lord Mayor or the Chief Executive um, to department heads. In this instance, the area concerned with infrastructure projects, that is what we call, I think, place these days. Some place, yes? Someone else calls it that. Yes, yeah. call it place, infrastructure, whatever it is, to make savings wherever possible to assist Council's burgeoning debt. So, Deputy in your answer, could you also refer to this idea of burgeoning debt, please? Um, a bit of clarity on that. Okay, so through the chair at QF2 on um, Tuesday night, you'll see that the um, proposed um, shifts as a result of some uh, changes to the long term plan in relation to strategic property purchases um, absolutely shows that there, if all our projects are delivered as currently. Um, state it does show that there is um, higher debt. Um, the reality is in my 18 years here, um, we don't actually deliver um, some of those major projects to time. And so um, on Friday morning, we have audit committee um, and we'll be discussing with them um, some of the challenges around what that means. And we will work through that uh, with you on the 24th of February as part of the initial discussions on your business plan and budget. Um, the Lord Mayor has certainly, as far as I'm aware, not directed me um, personally to um, 
delay infrastructure projects? So the short answer to the question, sorry for clarity, is no. Yeah. There's been no directive issue. From the Lord Mayor and the CEO. CEO? Through you, Chair. No, there's been no direction. I must say, the executive is always looking for efficiencies in a general sense and will continue to do so. And one final questions. question will that audit committee be a public meeting or will it be closed for the public? See you, Deputy. Through you, Chair. Councillor, you are a member of the audit committee, so you would know that it's open to the general public. Well, no, I don't know that. Um, uh, it's often requested. That Thank you, Councillor Martin. Speaker. No commentary is required. Are there any further questions on this item? Um, on, Chair, I'd just like to speak for myself and say at no time have I directed any staff, including the CEO or anyone in finance teams or infrastructure, to shelve projects, stop projects or anything other than that. The other thing is that it is normal commercial practice or financial practice that if you have a bucket of money sitting there that hasn't is allocated but it's sitting there, that it is actually reallocated in the next financial year and used for the current um, requirements that is any accountancy anywhere will tell you you don't hold on to money when you've got um, when you're not actually going to expend it in a period of time and we're talking about at least uh, a year, if not more, before we're going to get back into North Terrace. That's it. Thank Thanks. you for that clarity, Lord Mayor. Are there any further questions on 4.5? Through the Chair, before we conclude, I failed to introduce Matthew. Uh, Matthew is our new Associate Director of Infrastructure. Um, he started with us about three or so weeks ago. You probably saw him at the Council meeting last last week, and um, you'll be seeing Matthew a lot in all things that's going forward regarding infrastructure. So just wanted to let you know who, that's who he is, and you'll be seeing him again soon. Thanks, Chair. Welcome, Matthew. Moving on to 4.6, Golden Mortal Park Concept Plan and Community Land Management Plan. Welcome. Do we have any questions on the side or I'll pass to the CEO? Well, through the chair, again, we have a new staff member. Christy Anthony has commenced with council around about two or three weeks ago. Again, um, Christy is our Associate Director of Community and Culture. Um, so you'll be seeing Christy quite a bit too. Thanks, Chair. Welcome, Christy. Do we have any questions on this item? Councillor Martin, I think you expressed an interest in this last time. Was... Uh, no question. Very good call. Yeah, Excellent. Thank you, Christy. <laughs> Moving on to item 4.7 sanitising streets to alleviate asthma. Mm -hmm. Do we have any questions for Gary on this report or? Vigil. Council Don. Uh, thank you. It's um, I appreciate that you are following up on the uh, motion of council in looking into this. In your professional opinion, do you think this is warranted? The increase in the in the street cleansing. And for the chair. Um, so uh, the views of the author of the report are uh, mine uh, as well. And so I share uh, the opinion expressed in the, in the report in the sense that it's not a matter of any complex technical decision making. It's just because we haven't had um, complaints in regards to asthma episodes um, in this particular area. So uh, yeah, that's my opinion as well. Any further questions on the side? <laughs> Councillor Moran, is that a question or are you just checking? Councillor Noll. Um, what is the level of soiling I mean, uh, on those streets? I mean, we're talking about uh, the asthma, etc. Um, you know, what is the level of, of you know, the significance of the, the, the need to clean? And so, so I'd say uh, the, asthma, the, the allergen component, uh, uh, how significant is the, you know, the, the dirt or the that you are collecting, that is in the sense of just the general amenity of the streets. 
the cleansing frequency um, in this one, uh, the, in any street uh, in the city, uh, the frequency is managed on the basis of uh, service level of a standard of, of cleanliness. Mm -hmm. And we believe we can achieve that standard with our current uh, frequencies. Um, so uh, we, we don't see the point of increasing the frequency at this age, but uh, it, it is perfectly reasonable or acceptable if council thinks otherwise to, to increase the frequency as suggested. Any other questions? Gary? Through the chair, um, there's also occasions uh, where um, for uh, wind events, rain events and, and those types of events that where we would actively go out and address that street in between cleansing periods anyway um, as, a, as an ad hoc or a, um, just a response to particular events, we would always go out and respond to that if we have reports of issues like that at those places. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. Just before we finish up, I have um, I have just one more question. Um, do you think it's fair that streets like Hutt Street get sweeped less often than streets like O'Connor Street and Melbourne Street in North Adelaide? Oh. Yeah, so. um, fairness is a very uh, subjective matter to discuss when we're talking about managing and operation of the cleansing streets. Um, the frequencies that are set are set on the basis of the standard, which we believe we can achieve with the current uh, frequencies. Uh, and any additional uh, cleansing on request, if if there's any complaint that uh, we come across. Understood. Thank you. Uh, can I ask a question? Isn't it the case that we actually doubled the regime in Hutt Street at the end of last council because of the um, social problems and drinking problems? That the cleaning Councillor, please use your mic. Cleaning regime in Hutt Street was increased dramatically, in fact, in excess of other main streets. Through the chair, the, the plan uh, frequency has not, has not changed. Um, there might have been the case uh, uh, that we've attended to any particular request or complaint and... Uh, uh, well, I moved a motion in the last council, at the end of the last council, that we double the regime in here. Yeah, I'll get to the question. Double the um, regime in Hutt Street and I was assured by the CEO, who still see it now, that that was indeed happening. Has that been dropped off the radar now, has it? It's just that because of the social problems in Hutt Street, there were a lot of mattresses in that area. Um, I, hopefully, I'll be remember it was including the uh, south uh, south terrace as well around the parklands there. So that that extra cleaning has just got back to normal now. So I think Gary, do you have an answer on that one? Through through the chair. Um, I'm, I'm not familiar with it. When you said the last council, I think we back a year or two or. One year. One year. Okay. Um, but we oh. we do adjust the, the cleansing regime in the leaf fall period and post that as part of the, the pollen that, that comes with uh, that collection. No, I'm, this was a, this I'm was not a, familiar sorry, with adjudication of it prior though. This, this so. was a motion that went through council that I moved. Deputy CEO. Um, thank you, I do remember it and it was also in conjunction with some work we did about um, ensuring staff that were on the street on a regular basis, also providing um, insight and feedback back to our uh, depot teams to um, alert them to instances where there was rubbish or um, belongings. So that is still in place um, and those extra uh, cleans are certainly done, particularly around the South Parklands during the summer months. Thank you, Tim. Thank you. Any further questions on this side? Thank you. We'll move on to item 4.8, Creative Industries Design a Discussion Paper Submission. Councillor, your mic is still on. So no Turn it off, please. Chair, is it possible to discuss a uh, discussion paper and a no discussion meeting? Take that as a rhetorical no question, Councillor Martin. Do we have any questions for Sue? 
Is it a ginormous waste of time I was discussing that? I mean, the report's very Thank you, Sue. We'll move on to 4.9, pre-transition pre -transition development plan amendment. Shanti, welcome back. Mm. Members, do we have any uh, questions, issues that require interrogation on this matter? Members? No. Very well informed. Thank you. Shanti, please stay with us because we're moving to item 410, Planning and Design Code, Public Realm Policies. Any questions relating to this recommendation? Councillor Ebrin today. Thank you, Chair. Just a quick question. Um, recommendation 1.1, the term design standards, does that refer to the Adelaide Design Manual or is that something different? Um, through the Chair, design standards refers to like a new component of the planning system um, it's part of the new Planning and Development Infrastructure Act. So a design standard is effectively a, a document that would guide decisions around um, development in public realm. Okay, so, so it's separate to the uh, design yeah. Any questions on this side? Councillor Donovan. Um, on uh, page 125, under the policies excluded from the draft code, you refer to some of the policies that have been excluded that relate specifically to pedestrians and car and bike parking. Um, I, I think it's such a massive document and that you've pulled that out is, um, I will not make that comment. Um, <laughs> um, my question is, do you feel that it needs more detail to to pull out what those tools are and actually articulate those. Um, so, for example, you've said policy tools to protect and enhance to actually dot point those and, and point to those, or is that somewhere else in the document that I missed entirely possible? Um, through the chair, that is referring to item 4.11. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yeah. So ignore that question and I'll hold up until then. Uh, no, I think it's actually there. I was sort of really looking at the um, um, the amendments to the section 221 and 222. Um, and, uh, you know, I know we're feeding that back, but is is that is just in terms of clarity around my understanding. So that will mean that sort of the permits to construct effectively are going to scap and not to council through what they've suggested and therefore does that mean that you know in terms of our ability to look at sort of remediation and encroachment and all that so that is also impacted can I just have a little bit of clarity on that um, through the chair we believe that um, the amendments uh, that are being created to the local government act um, are, will create what I would describe as an unintended consequence. Yep. So essentially the legal advice that we have received um, uh, essentially says that uh, through, through the issuing of a planning consent, the ability of a, an authority, local government, to control through the Local Government Act will be substantially curtailed. Um, to the point where uh, the ability to um, to inform and influence like we currently do through the permitting system will potentially be removed. Okay. Further questions, Lord Mayor? Um, does it have an impact on our encroachment? So just so I understand, so in terms of our ability for rateable in terms of encroachments and things like that, so? Uh, through the chair, yeah. potentially, yes. Councillor Martin? Yeah, just a, a quick question. Um, if I were able to make a statement, I would probably say to the administration the work that they've done on this is pretty good. Um, very good, in fact, but I'm not going to say Good question, Councillor. So, uh, but uh, I, I am um, 
concerned about the preferred option of the administration, which is in order to av avoid the impacts of these public realm policies, uh, which will be implemented from the 1st of July, is for this council to request that parliament not proclaim the minister's PDI Act, that's uh, Minister Canole, um, um, so that further investigations can be undertaken. How is it proposed that this council does that? It, will it be a letter from the CEO, a personal approach to members of parliament by the CEO, the Lord Mayor speaking to the minister saying we're opposing this and we're going to lobby parliamentarians? How is that proposed that, to happen? Um, through the chair, essentially um, by writing to the minister and the, and the state planning commission, requesting that consideration be given to that proposition. Okay, so the, the line that says the preferred option is to request Parliament to not proclaim Schedule Six Part Seven is actually to request the minister to not proclaim that, as well as the department. Through the chair, that's correct. Thank you. Okay. Do you know if there's any further questions? If not, we're moving to item 4.11 planning and design code draft submission. Helen, please. As per my previous. Um, through the chair, um, would you mind repeating? <laughs> sure, sorry. Um, on page 125, you um, pull out in a very valid point the comments around the policy tools that uh, protect enhanced pedestrian movement, for example, that are being removed from the City of Adelaide zones and the general development uh, modules. Do you think it would be worth specifying what those are? You know, I don't know to, to what extent this will get read and by whom, but to actually pull it out in detail. Um, because I think it relates to so many different areas within the draft um, PD design code, and it could be interesting uh, to have those all pulled out and articulated. Certainly, through the chair, um, at the table you have referred to as certainly a summary of the key points which we intend to form um, the basis of the council submission. Um, for refer members, um, the attachment that's provided as part of the report is in a number of different parts. Um, some are provided as links due to the size of them. Um, I do quickly draw attention to, so part A1 is what we are proposing is proposed rewording of the policies to go into the code. So we are suggesting we put forward the actual amendments that we'd like to be um, put in. In the case of the, the item you've identified with the pedestrian, I would be really seeking the current policy that exists, which deals with that, that matter to be re reinserted into the code. Um, we've also undertaken an audit of the current development plan to identify, really go through every policy to identify which ones um, have been <coughs> picked up in the code, which ones haven't, and those ones which we seek to be, be status. So that will be provided in the detail of the submission. And um, imagine the end submission will be some immense document, but will we see that before it goes back or not because of the timeline? Uh, through the chair, um, we are working to a deadline of the 28th of February. This does need to go through a council resolution and decision. Um, so we will be working to some really um, tight timelines. So uh, we will definitely make our submission available to members once it's endorsed by council and it will be a large document. 600 plus pages are informed. Lily, mm -hmm. did you, oh, you didn't have a question? No. Any other questions for Shanti? No? Shanti, thank you. Moving to item 5.1, exclusion of the public to consider in confidence. We have two items for consideration in confidence. Item 6.1, the 2019-20 Planning and Development Fund projects. 
and item 6.2 partnership proposals 2019-20 can i have a, a mover for motion 6.1 councillor canole and a seconder no, no. are you seconding councillor martin no no i was a seconder please councillor abraham today councillor canole you wish to speak councillor abraham today okay. members I, well, let me just say, Chair, uh, this matter should not be held in confidence. Um, it is information that is generally already in the public realm, uh, with some minor exceptions. The documents could have been printed with certain parts removed. Um, but there is no agreement with uh, the parties involved. I don't see why this matter is in confidence. Any other speakers? Councillor Canold, Summer. To the vote, those in favour, those against, let's carry. Can I have a mover for item 6.2? Councillor Abraham today, seconder. Councillor Kira. Councillor Abraham today, do you wish to speak? No, thank you. Councillor Kira. Members. Councillor Abraham today to sum up. All those in favour? Those opposed? That item is carried. Members of the gallery and staff, thank you for your attendance this evening. Uh, members of the gallery and staff not associated with items 6.1 and 6.2, can you please now leave the Colonel Light Room whilst the committee considers the next items on the agenda? <laughs>
по And that concludes our meeting this evening. Thank you for your attendance.